Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha to all our friends. My name is Mark Schklav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we will go across the sea between Hawaii and Japan and talk about friendship amongst lawyers. You may ask yourself, can lawyers be friends with each other? Can lawyers from across the sea, from different cultures and different legal systems, be friends with each other? Can bar associations from different countries be friends with each other? Uh, my guest today is Shinpei Oke, and he is going to answer those questions for us. Mr. Oki is a lawyer practicing with the Hawaii law firm of Goodsell, Anderson, Quinn, and Stifel. In 2005, the Hawaii State Bar Association and the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association entered into a friendship agreement. And the lawyers from each bar association have been going back and forth across the sea, holding biennial meetings, either in Tokyo or Honolulu, ever since. Mr. Oki recently chaired the 2018 friendship meeting between the Hawaii State Bar Association and the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association here in Hawaii. Welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good to see you. Good and to see you too, thank you very much. May I call you Shinpei? Yes, please do, right. Mark. We, please. Are, we are tomodachi. Yes, we are. So we are friends. We are friends for quite some time now, I believe. Right, right. <laughs> so first of all, before we go into friendship agreements and everything like that, I want you to tell me a little bit about yourself so we can figure out how you, how you got to be the chair of the 2018 friendship meeting between the two bar associations. Of course. So tell me a little bit about your background. Of course, thank you, Mark. Yes, um, I was, as you introduced, I was uh, born and raised in Japan uh, to Japanese parents who don't speak a word of English. I attended a international school in Japan. So how, although I was brought up in a Japanese household, I was educated in a U.S. curriculum. And it was uh, very natural for us for the graduates of international students, uh, international school students to move on to colleges in the United States, Europe, Canada, Australia. Some choose to stay in Japan. Uh, what I did was I decided to proceed uh, with my college education in the United States where I attended a university in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, say, now wait a minute, uh, St. Louis, Missouri? How did you ever figure that you're going to go there from Tokyo? Well, that's a that's a very long story. <laughs> but to to keep it short, um, it was uh, I, I was thankfully accepted to university of one of my choices, and it just happens to be in St. Louis. Um, it provided the curriculum that I was looking for, and and the the the, the one issue that I, I had in mind when I was choosing colleges is I wanted to be someplace that's very different from where I well, grew up. Well, sure. So, and in fact, it was very different. Yeah. Um, frigid winters and um, very hot summers. Um, very little Asians. <laughs> very little Japanese. Um, so those things are all uh, a mix of uh, the reasons why I decided to attend college in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, and so you were, you were speaking uh, Japanese at home. Yes. And you're going to international school in Tokyo speaking yes. English, yes. I, guess, I guess, right? Yes. And so you're learning both languages. How did you get to the, how, I mean, how did your parents send you to the international school? Well, just... you know, it's, it's, that's, a, that's somewhat of a mystery to me too, but uh, <laughs> what I suspect is that 30 years ago, what they, my parents took a gamble um, to, to just, they, they, I guess they, they, they thought that 30 years from that time, English would be a critical aspect of being able to survive in this global wow. global economy. Pretty good foresight. It, well, I, I'm very thankful now. Uh, yeah. But I did have to study Japanese as an extracurricular activity, which seems a little odd, but reading and writing is, is an important aspect of language also, not just speaking. So that was, uh, that was what we did. So you grew up doing both, both languages, and yes. uh, you ultimately came to Hawaii, went to law school here. Yes, I did. So after I graduated university in St. Louis, um, I was on a student visa. And when you graduate on a student, after a student visa, you're afforded a 12-month period of optional practical training, where the, 
where, where international students are afforded an opportunity to get practical work experience in the United States. And I wanted to take advantage of that 12-month period because I thought once I go back to Japan, right. I would go back permanently. I wouldn't have the opportunity to work in the United States. Mm -hmm. At that time, my brother, my older brother, happened to be living in Hawaii. And uh, I just decided maybe it would be fun to just live with him for a couple of months and decided to come to Hawaii, met some people here who recommended law school could be fun if I didn't go back to Japan. I applied, got in, and been here since. Wow, yeah. wow. And, and so your background, uh, kind of a combination Japanese, uh, I guess American, and now you're a lawyer here at Goodsell, mm -hmm. and does that, is that the type of practice you have, that you bring all those things together? Or? Yes, unfortunately, I am, I, I am in, 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 in an industry where, um, and a location, Hawaii, is, is very friendly to Japanese investors, Japanese businesses, and, and very much today, Japan remains very much interested in Hawaii. Um, and my work involves uh, assisting Japanese companies, individual Japanese investors, uh, trying to, to, to do something in Hawaii, be it start a business, buy real estate, um, you know, it, all sorts of things. So I, I am, in, in, thankfully, in, in a very interesting area of being able to help Japanese clients do things in Hawaii. Okay, wow. All right, well, let, let's talk now about uh, friendship agreements. Mm -hmm. I, I know something about them. I, mm -hmm. I've been involved since the beginning of course. Of these friendship agreements, yes. but uh, I want to learn a little bit about your experience with them and t tell us what, what is a friendship agreement? I mean, what, 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 what does it do? You know, from my limited experience <laughs> um, and involvement with friendship agreements, I mean, I, it, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for two bar associations to get together, learn about each other, just really make friends. And as a professional at one level, it's a great networking opportunity because you get to meet lawyers from other countries and you become friends with them. And uh, at, a, at a higher level, it really is an opportunity for the people involved to, uh, to just learn about how different countries practice law and how from the simple things like how a bar, bar association is organized to the complexities of how they deal with foreign clients, these things are things that you can learn firsthand from being involved in a friendship agreement. And the friendship agreement gives you a, a excuse for you to meet people and talk to people about the things that you're interested in. It's like a vehicle. It's, it does, it, yes. Okay, right. yes. good, good, yes. good, good. I think that's per perfect way to describe mm -hmm. it. And, and uh, now, we have lawyers in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and we have lawyers in Japan, yes. and our agreement uh, was with a Tokyo Bar Association, mm -hmm. Daiichi Tokyo. What, 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 what are, basically, we, uh, how many lawyers do we have in Hawaii? How many in Japan? And what's, what, what's the differences uh, between the practice of law? Mm. Okay. Um, and I did do a little bit of homework, so I have, I have uh, a little bit of information about that. Uh, my understanding is, as of 2017, the Hawaii State Bar Association has approximately 8,000 members, 7,991. Wow. Um, of which 4,931 are active. Okay. Well, compare that to Japan. Japan has approximately 40,000 attorneys. Okay. And of course, this is the entire country. The entire country, entire yeah. country. But when you look at the Tokyo right. Bar Associations, and, and I can provide a little bit of information about how the Tokyo Bar Association is set up, but in Tokyo, of the 40,000, I believe, 18,243 are based in Tokyo. Okay. All right. And we and in Hawaii, we have one bar association. Yes. Now in Tokyo, there's three bar associations. There is what, what's that about? There's three bar associations. And I don't know what the story behind that is, but what I've been told from the Japan attorneys, because that's something that we're all curious about. Why does, is it just the sheer number of attorneys that they have? Or um, what I understand is historically, when the lawyer licensing system in Japan was established, the, the three bar associations in Tokyo existed. And what happened was after it pre-existed the, the, what is currently known as the federal bar association in Japan. So what happened was when the federal bar association in Japan was created, it created bar associations each of the 50 district. But Tokyo already had three bar associations existing in, at the time, so it just, carried on from what it had. Okay. Um, 
So does that and, make sense? Well, it, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a cultural thing, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. And are they in competition? Are they? Uh, do, do you, how do you know which bar bar to choose from? Is there any? Any way to figure that out? No, I, what, is, what one attorney in Japan told me is the bar association in Tokyo that they would join is completely determined upon which bar association your boss is in. Ah. So even within the same law firm, you could have people in different bar associations. So there is the Tokyo Bar Association, yeah. the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association, which we have the relationship okay. with, and the Daini Tokyo Bar Association. Okay, what, what, what does Daiichi mean? What Daiichi you... means number one, or, 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 <laughs> or, or, or yeah, not in terms of rank, but you know, number one, uh, like the, yeah. The first one. The first one, I guess, the oh, first, okay. first one. Daini would mean the second one. And the Tokyo Bar Association doesn't have any numbers okay. affiliated with it now. Yeah. Okay, all right. So we have a relationship with uh, uh, the Hawaii State Bar Association and the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association mm -hmm. have, have a relationship, a friendship agreement, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I know that it started a few, quite a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, when we started to think about going outside of Hawaii and making relationships, I think, as you said, that would help develop social and professional contacts and networking. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. And has that been your experience? I mean, your personal experience, how, how, long, how long have you been involved with, with the friendship agreements and what has been your experience with them? So I was licensed in Hawaii practice in 2010 and as you previously noted, this friendship agreement with the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association had been established in 2005. So I was very fortunate to be able to come out, come in as a practicing attorney when this relationship already existed. Um, and, and of course, your, con your background makes it fit for it you. It worked very well for oh, me, okay. yes. And the first time I was um, actively involved with this uh, relationship with the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association, was uh, fairly recently, it was back in 2016, okay. um, when we had the, uh, we as in the HSBA had, uh, uh, it was our turn to visit the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association in Japan. And uh, with that, I got involved in the planning of it. And uh, my language ability was, it was uh, of some use because we did have to coordinate uh, the events with uh, the Daiichi Bar Association members. And, uh, and that's how I started. And, and, and how did you get grabbed to become the chairman of the, the, the latest uh, well, meeting, the, the, the late, latest friendship meeting? Well, Mark, you're, you're very kind to, <laughs> to, 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 to note, note me as a chair. But this very much was a collective effort among um, everybody that was involved. Mark, as you well know, you were very, very much involved from the beginning and in the organization of uh, this year's event. Uh, but uh, how it happened to be that I got actively, more actively involved than before was, it's just the, the language ability, the, the, mm. the, the planning of it, and you know, um, discussing the details with uh, Daiichi folks. It just helps to be able to communicate in Japanese, and I think it's a way for uh, the, the, the Hawaii State Bar Associations to show um, and it's, uh, at one level, some respect to be able to, to communicate with them in Japanese and be able to organize um, in, the, in, in a way that they feel comfortable doing. And one, one thing you mentioned was that uh, this was a group effort, mm -hmm. okay? And I want to talk a little bit about that after the break. Mm -hmm. And also I want to go through some photos of our last uh, meeting here in, in Honolulu after the break. But we're going to take a short break and then come back. Sounds great. Okay. Be politicians, be preachers 
us. Yeah, yeah. Be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions. We are back talking about friendship agreements with Shimpe Oki, a Hawaii lawyer with Good Sil Anderson Quinn and Stifel, and Shimpe. Uh, you mentioned before our break that uh, we had a group effort to put together uh, the latest meeting between the two bar associations, the Daiichi Tokyo Bar, Hawaii State Bar. Now that tells me something. Group effort. That means friendship. Yes. So who, who were the friends? That, I mean, they were from all over town, or who, who was involved, just well, generally? Just generally. Well, well you were involved, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> um, but uh, we had the support of the international law section of the Hawaii State Bar Association, chaired by Rex Fujichaku. Um, he has been, of course, tremendously helpful in, in getting things going in terms of planning, communicating with the Bar Association, um, getting the venues. and. And uh, yeah, we had local attorneys involved as speakers. We had local businesses involved as sponsors. Uh, we had local attorneys involved as the planners. So we had- And not just from one firm, but from all over. Oh, not just from one firm. We really had from all over. We had private practitioners. We have uh, members from larger firms. We have, uh, yeah, we was, it was really a whole mix of, 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 of different attorneys involved in the planning. And through the planning process, I had the opportunity to meet with a lot of new different Hawaii folks as well. And make some friends. It makes some very good friends, okay. yes. Now, uh, when the Daiichi Tokyo Bar came here, we had a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. I want to go through first set of photos. Sure. Maybe tell us with each one what, what's going on with these activities of the Daiichi Tokyo Bar of Association. Okay, of let's, let's uh, see if we can get uh, the first set of photos up. Okay. Okay, so this is a photo from the actual seminar that we had. Um, we had uh, speakers from the now Denton firm. Uh, we had uh, Glenn Melchinger and, and Dick Moser. And we had, we had two speakers from Daiichi. Uh, let me get their names so I don't get them wrong. So Mr. Tezuka Hiroyuki and Mr. Yoshiro Takatori. And the topic of the converse, uh, the seminar was uh, international ADR. And that was the seminar that they had with both bar associations here in Honolulu. That's correct. Up, up at the bar headquarters. Okay. That's correct, yes. Next one. This is a photo from our welcome reception, which was uh, graciously hosted by uh, the residents of Rich and Ray Turbin. Uh, this is a photo of the president of the Tokyo Bar. Right uh, in the middle there. Da Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association so in the middle. And of course, everybody would recognize Justice McKenna. And Who's we had, a fluent speaker, who is, born in yes, Japan. Yes, born in Japan, fluent Japanese speaker. Um, we have Professor Levinson and a couple of law students who were able yeah. to get involved as well. Yeah, sure. and that, that's a good point. I mean, some of the law students from UH Law School got involved and made contacts and made some friends with bar, yes. bar members from both bars. Okay, yes, that, much, let's yeah. go to the next photo. This is a photo from our farewell reception, which was hosted by the Daiichi. Tokyo Bar Association. We did it at uh, Cafe Julia downtown. And uh, yeah, it was a nice get together at the end of the program where, where we got to sit, talk, and, and uh, enjoy entertainment. Okay. I think Next. we have a couple more, yeah. Okay. And this is the entertainment <laughs> that, that was provided by Louise Ng of the Denton firm. Her uh, hula group came out to perform for us. And so there is L L Louise Ng, a <laughs> practicing attorney doing the hula. Yes. Former pr president of Hawaii State Bar Association. <laughs> and. Uh, doing a really nice job. Yes, it was fantastic. Okay, yes. next. And to the farewell reception, Justice Rechtenwald was kind enough to drop by to give a few words, and this is him uh, giving a quick, quick uh, speech to uh, the, the attendees. The CJ, okay, yes. next. This is a photo from, we do among, not, we're just not here to, to study, we are here to have fun as well, and, and it's the spirit of making friends. Uh, we had a golf get-together with the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association members, and uh, this is a photo from their round of, I think this is right after the round of golf. Right, so, and yeah, so that's an important part, is, is to blend the social activities along with uh, 
professional activities and the networking and we put on a seminar and and so you, you, everybody gets to know each other on different levels which right. I think is a cultural thing too right I, I agree yeah yeah it's very much true. All right. Is, uh, is there, where is our, okay. okay. Oh, so this is a photo, for, again, from the welcome reception, and, and we see you and Rex Fuji Chaplin, <laughs> the president of the to Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. Every year, uh, not every year, when we have these events, yeah. the two bar, bar associations uh, have a tradition of exchanging gifts, and th that photo, which, Mark, you had a, you played a critical role in, in, in <laughs> deciding what to, 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 to provide. Um, is a photo from a local photographer. Matt Kwok, yeah, and, and it's of, of Kilauea. I mean, yeah. talk about timing. Timing, timing. right, <laughs> perfect, yes. It's a beautiful photo, which we presented to Daiichi as our gift from HSBA. Very nice, next. And that is a gift provided by the Daiichi Bar Association to HSBA. I think it is displayed at the HSBA office today. Okay. All right. And this is a, a photo, oh, and one of the activities that the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association get, gets involved with is the tour of the Supreme Court, of course, um, may, which Justice McKenna allows us to make happen. And, uh, and by chance, uh, the India Supreme Court justices were visiting at the same time, and this is a photo with them. And so we made some more friends. I think they uh, did, know, yes. From India yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. That's, that's fun. Yes. And this final photo is, from, is a, a group photo of the, the attendees from the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. Okay, all right. Well, now, so, uh, is there anything about these meetings that uh, are culturally significant or related to either Japan or Hawaii cultures? No, it's... I, I would, I think so. I mean, this is an opportunity for just lawyers to talk frankly, not on a transaction or not on adverse basis, but we're just here to talk. And being able to do so allows us to exchange ideas with other lawyers from other countries and, I mean, who are, in fact, interested in Hawaii. I mean, we are interested in Japan and the people from Daiichi are interested in Hawaii. So it provides a good opportunity. It's, it's just a good ve vehicle, as you mentioned, for, for these things to be, be f discussed. And, 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 and it's just a, a fun, fun discussion that we have. And, and uh, because the issues we discuss involve both countries, we both have something to share. We both have something to contribute. And, and, and I think it's helpful that we talk to each other, too, from, we, from different cultures and get to know each other and maybe help avoid problems, hopefully, in, in the future, or help us get through problems talking. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And, and the topic this year at our seminar was cross-border ADR, and, and one of the, the discussion was, you know, how can we both get involved in, 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 in doing, resolving disputes? And, and where would be a good place to do it, how, sh how we should do it. These are all things that would not have been discussed unless this event had happened. And we went to, uh, our, our, the Hawaii State Bar Association went to Tokyo mm -hmm. a couple years ago, right, when, when it was our yes. turn to go. Yes. And so we, we do have some f photos of that trip. Yes. And I'd like to go through some of those photos of uh, and kind of explain uh, who, who was in the photos sometimes, and, okay. and uh, uh, what happened in, in Tokyo, for, and then tell us when the next trip is for the Hawaii State Bar. Okay. So let's, let's take a look, okay. okay. So this is a photo, this is a conference room at the Morrison Forster Tokyo office where we have Craig Wagnield at the top giving a presentation. Um, and as part of our trip to Japan, what we included was a, um, a CLE session uh, for the Hawaii attorneys who are practicing in Japan to get uh, credit. Get credit. Yeah. So that was that w w one of the events that we had, and this is a photo from that conference. Because in, in, in the Hawaii State Bar, you have to get so many cr credits every year, and this gives those lawyers a chance to get it, right, that's, in, in person. That's right, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, okay. And this is a group photo of HSBA members at the Japan Supreme Court. Um, we had the opportunity to, as, as Part of our tour, we, we arranged different educational trips as well, and, and we did have an opportunity to meet with one of the justices um, in chambers, uh, where no photos were allowed, unfortunately, but in one of the hearings room, we were able to take a photo, and this is a and This photo. is the Supreme Court of Japan room where they hear cases. That's correct, yes. Okay, next. 
This is a, a, a photo from the background. You can see it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a photo of the joint seminar, which was in Japan. Um, up front, it's kind of small, but you see the speakers up there from HSBA and the speakers from Daiichi. And that's in the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. Th this was in the, uh, the, the Tokyo, I think, I don't know who owns that building, but the Bar Association in Tokyo, I think, collectively owns a, right. an entire building. And it's from the, it, it is in, in, in one of the seminar rooms from, from their building. And the topic, uh, this was back in 2016, was cross-border estate planning. Okay. And that's a photo of, again, our, our, our chair of uh, the international law section of HSBA, HSBA Rex Fujichaku. And I believe that's the, the former president of the uh, Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. OK, next. Of course, we always have fun as well. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the nomikais, or get-togethers, we had at one of the izakayas uh, near Tokyo Station, we see a, a group of, we see you and your wife and uh, members from the Daiichi Tokyo Bar. We also have an attorney from New York. Yeah, now let, that's, that's how this thing has spread. Because, because at the one in Tokyo, we had uh, a lawyer from New York. That's, that's the fellow right on the, on the right-hand side as I'm looking at it, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Goldstein. And we also had a lawyer from France that's right. Uh, who bo both of them wanted to become part of that uh, uh, Hawaii bar trip to the Daiichi Tokyo Friendship right. meeting. And so they, they joined us. Right. So we yeah. kind of it spread out beyond just Hawaii and Tokyo. Yes, it's not every day that they get to mingle in this fashion with Japanese attorneys. and. And this was a good opportunity for them to just, just jump in on the bandwagon. And so that helps uh, n networking opportunities. Too. Yes, absolutely. Yes. OK. Yes. And this is a group photo of, uh, of all members from HSBA and Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association who attended the seminar in 2016. OK, nice group. Yeah, quite nice a bit of us, of yeah. yeah. OK, so when is the next time for Hawaii State Bar Association to go to Tokyo? How do uh, lawyers get involved? And do you have to be a lawyer to be involved? No, uh, the, the, the next round of, of, of meetings is going to happen in 2020 in Tokyo, Olympic year. Very okay. exciting. I think we're going to avoid the summertime, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we but, won't go to the Olympics, probably. Right. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, anyone can involve, to get involved at, at, at any level. Um, the seminars are usually tailored towards attorneys, as this is an organization be between uh, two, uh, two bar associations. Uh, but we get we, we need sponsors. We, we we provide gifts to the bar associations, and, and there's there's ways that people can get involved in terms of sponsorship or or support, or whether they want to just come to Japan and not attend the seminar, but just attend the, the other social activities. Um, when we had the event in Japan, we had non-lawyers be present at the social events because they wanted to make network, they wanted to meet so attorneys. A Hawaii business might want to uh, make some contacts mm -hmm. in Japan or provide some sort of uh, service to Japanese Bengoshi lawyers, mm -hmm. and uh, th this is a good opportunity it to, would be, to yes. do that. Yeah, I would okay. think so. So if, if I'm a Hawaii lawyer, who should I contact uh, about the next... Uh, Next meeting. Well, you can contact Mark, or you can contact me, uh, and you are. Or Rex. I Rex, of course, you can always Rex contact. Rex the head of the international law section. Yes, and of course, okay. if, if Rex may not be chairing the international law section, if you contact the international law section, they are the, 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 the central organization in allowing us to make this event happen. Okay. Shinpei, thank you for talking about friendship across the sea and the uh, friendship agreement we have between the Hawaii State Bar and the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. And I'm looking forward to the next, the next time we all get together oh. with the Daiichi Tokyo. Oh, so, Mark, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, arigato. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much.